Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be filming my review and a three demo look on the Colourpop 4 Edit collection. This collection is a really big collection. We have literally so much to go through. I have dupes for the eyeshadows, the highlighters, the luxe lipsticks. I'm going to be giving you three demos and I'm doing my three demos a little bit differently in this video. It's going to be much more in depth and I'm actually talking to you while I am applying the makeup instead of me doing a voiceover. So I have a strong feeling that this video is going to be super duper long so I'm just going to cut the intro and let's just go ahead and get started. So this collection consists of an eyeshadow palette, a highlighting palette, six luxe lipsticks and supernova shadows. So I only picked up the eyeshadow palette, the highlighting palette and the luxe lipsticks. I didn't pick up the supernova shadows. I do like the supernova shadows but I personally don't reach for them even if I do like the formula. I'm I'm just not into using cream wet products. I just like to stick to my powders. So yeah, I didn't get the whole collection, but if you want to get the whole collection as a bundle, they do have a set for you for 100 US dollars. You can get the supernova sets for 30 US dollars as well. So you can get everything in bundles. So the first thing I want to talk about is obviously the eyeshadow palette. This is the Good Sport 12 Pan Eyeshadow Palette. And you guys know I love the ColourPop Pressed Powder Formula. It's one of my all-time favorite formulas, if not my favorite all-time eyeshadow formula. So I'm really excited for this and when I saw this I was super super excited because I love the color combinations I personally haven't seen a color combination like this before So it was really cool to see that Colourpop is really branching out. This is 16 US dollars You will get seven mattes and five shimmers. I have a lot to say about this palette. I don't even know where to start Let's just jump right into it straight off the bat. I don't really like this palette out of all Colourpop palettes This is the palette that I am the most disappointed with. Some of these shades in here were just so incredibly hard to work with and so patchy and you guys will see that in the demos but I just want to quickly mention it here. So the shadows that I had the most problems with were the purples. So Sister, Reckless and Flow. All the purples in here, they were just so choppy. It would stick to a certain part of my eye more than the other part of my eye and you can see on one part of my eye it was just like left blank. It would just keep skipping over. I've never had an issue with Colourpop's eyeshadows ever no matter how dark or light I've always loved them and I always made it work somehow but this one it literally was so hard to work with when you look at this palette as a whole you're like wow this is very unique but once you like dissect the palette and I'm gonna dissect it for you guys okay I'm really gonna go into the nitty-gritty on why I think this palette is not as good as other Colourpop palettes when you look at the shadows individually you can easily dupe them from Colourpop from other palettes I'm just going to show the swatches of the dupes that I have for you guys and I'm not going to really talk about it because I feel like you guys can kind of see with your own eyes why these are dupes or comparisons. So not all of them are dupes, some of them are just comparisons. I'm just going to roll those clips now and you guys can see for yourself. So now that you guys saw all the four dupes that I had, you can see that they are quite similar to other Colourpop palettes or shadows that you might already have. So those were four dupes. And then I have four shadows that I feel like are in a lot of palettes that you already have. You can easily find these in different palettes. So I think Wild Out, Reckless, High Hopes, and Flow. I feel like these four shadows you can easily find in different palettes, something very, very similar. So now that we have four dupes, four similar shades from other palettes, we only have four shadows left. So the four shadows left that are more unique to this palette are Sister, Hooked, Trophies, and EBB. So Sister is already knocked off. I, even though this shade is unique, it doesn't work. I never want to touch that shadow anymore, so that's like completely out. These three on the bottom, I think they work perfectly fine. They are great shadows. They are very unique. I love them. But three out of 12 eyeshadows, it really doesn't make this palette worth it, if you guys are catching my drift. I mean, for $16, if only three shades work perfectly fine and are unique shades, is this palette really worth to get? For those reasons, I'm not going to personally recommend it to you guys. I had a lot of trouble working with these eyeshadows. I feel like demo one was the easiest look to do. I really do feel bad talking negatively about this palette, but it's just my honest opinion. I usually have a good time with Colourpop palettes, but 
just this one wasn't for me. And next up we have the Crush On You Super Shock Highlighting Palette. So this is a first from Colourpop. This is 18 US dollars. It is their Super Shock formula in a palette, which is so cool and crazy to me because I always thought the Super Shock shadow had to be in a jar and it had to be like closed tightly or it would get dried up. And I think this is a really great way to travel with the Super Shock shadows because in the um, little jars, they are very, very fragile. I cannot tell you how many times I received a Super Shock formula and it has like shattered on me. So I think putting in a palette is much more safe and a little bit more sturdy. I personally like it, but it's just mediocre to me. Like it's cool, the shadows are nice, I will definitely use it, but I don't know, I'm just not like screaming for it. I do think Colourpop did choose a good choice of um, shades for this highlighting palette. I mean, it's their first Super Shock highlight. I'm pretty sure they wanted to create shades that would suit everyone. There weren't any crazy shades, they were just like everyday shades that you could use. And I really do like them. I see myself using this a lot. I don't think this is like an outstanding product, but if you are a big fan of the Super Shock formula, I would say give this one a go. I'm pretty sure you would enjoy it. I do have a couple of dupes for you guys, so it's up to you if you really want to get this palette. Some of them are not dupes, some of them are just comparisons, and I will write on the screen whether they are a dupe or comparison. It might be in their press formula, not in this super shock formula. So it really varies and it really depends on what you have in your collection. So with that being said, I'm going to roll the clips of the dupes. Okay, so moving along, we are going to move to the Luxe Lipsticks. There are six Luxe Lipsticks in this collection. You can get all six for $36. It doesn't save you any money, it's just in a bundle and it comes in like a little cute little box. So out of the six lipsticks, five of them are matte and only one of them are cream. I'm going to talk about each individual shade and let you know how I feel about them and if I think it's worth you picking up. I'm going to start off with the shade Electric Feel, which is the most wearable out of them all. It's like the peachy nude shade. I love this shade. I think it's so beautiful But for some reason this makes my lips look so incredibly dry like it like emphasizes all the lines and cracks on my lips like it does not look pleasing. I don't know if it's just my lips going through a lot right now. Like my lips are literally so sensitive right now. I don't know if it's that but the other mattes in this collection I don't feel like my lips look that bad with it on. It's just something about electric feel. Maybe it's like a lighter shade. It really emphasizes those lines. The next shade I want to talk about is Better Off and this is the only cream in the collection. If you think the mattes are a little bit too drying, just put lip balm underneath and they work exactly like the cream formula. But Better Off I think is a really really pretty shade, perfect for the fall time or the summer time. I'm wearing it today but I kind of blotted it down a little bit. This is one of my favorites in the collection so I would recommend this one. Next we have Around the World. So Around the World is like a beautiful color, but I think this color is such a weird color to put in this collection. It just doesn't belong. When I was creating my three looks and I was watching all the lip colors, I feel like most of the lip colors really suited the eye look, but Around the World was just so random. It just didn't go well with any of the eye looks that I created, and it was just like the odd one out in this collection. And if you have the shades Get a Room or Trapeze, you don't need this one. I'm gonna show you the dupes. They look exactly the same. You don't need the shade if you already have those two shades. And I don't know why Colourpop is making another, like this is like the third similar shade. Not even similar, it's like exactly the same to me. Next, I want to talk about Doing Fine. There is another similar color from the Luxe Lipsticks in Unraveled, and you guys will see they are quite similar. This one is a pretty color for fall time, but again, Colourpop has a similar color to this before. Um, 
Next up we have Pencil Me In. This one is a really, really pretty shade. I thought it was very similar to the shade Cheche, but it's not. It's very, very different and you guys will definitely see that. I think it's like a really pretty burgundy deep red, like a wine red. It is quite patchy on the lips and with these kind of colors, they do tend to be a little bit patchier. It's very hard for me to like a really deep red wine and for it not to be patchy. So I'm not like too mad. You definitely can make it work if you have like a lip liner similar to the shade you definitely won't have a problem with that and then lastly we have JV honestly JV is probably one of my favorites I think this formula in matte like all the mattes are fairly the same but they vary in the shade range pencil me in was a little bit more patchy and a little bit more rough it was a little bit stiff like it kind of tugs on the lips but JV is seriously so smooth but it's matte and it's so pigmented I love this shade so much I really want to do an eye look centered around JV it's like Getty's older sister obviously it's a shade that I wouldn't wear like every day it's not like my go-to lipstick but it's such a fun shade and these are the kind of shades that I like to see from Colourpop I feel like they have so many like neutrals and reds and oranges I really like seeing them come out with these kind of fun shades and the formula on JV is like literally amazing so out of these six Lux lipsticks, my favorite are definitely better off in JV. These are the ones that I would recommend formula-wise and shade-wise. So that was pretty much all my thoughts on the eyeshadows, the highlights, and the Luxe lipsticks. If I did miss anything else and you guys have any further questions, you can leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer. If you want me to compare like a Luxe lipstick to a certain shade that you think is a dupe or comparison that I didn't mention in this video, just DM me on Instagram or um, hit me up on Twitter. I will reply to you, I'll swatch it for you, and I'll send a picture like directly to you. Because sometimes I can miss shades. I mean, I have so many Lux lipsticks and this collection was literally so big. It was a lot for me to like process it all. But yeah, that was pretty much it for my review and comparisons. Let's go ahead and get started with the demos. Okay guys, so we're going to jump straight into demo one, but for the demos from now on, I kind of want to start doing something a little bit different. If you guys are familiar with my three demo looks, you would know that I always do like a voiceover, but I was thinking of ways that I could improve my videos, and I think maybe just talking to the camera when I'm doing my demos and really explaining what I'm doing, maybe you guys will feel a little bit more connected with me, you'll be getting more out of the video, I'll be teaching more. I feel like when I do voiceovers, they're a little bit more rushed, they're not really that in depth. So hopefully with this kind of new direction that I want to take with my three demo looks, maybe it will be a little bit more helpful towards you guys. I'm going to have all the same base products throughout all of the three demo looks. So if you guys are ever curious on what's on my face, it's going to be these products for this video. I will always write it in the description box as well, but I thought I would just verbally mention it. So for primer, I use the ColourPop All Star Matte and Blur Primer. For foundation, I use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in the shade Golden Beige. And for my concealer I use the Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer in the shade golden beige as well to set my concealer down I use the Colourpop no filter setting powder in the shade translucent and to set the rest of my face I use the wet n wild photo focus press powder in the shade warm beige I just did my brows as well my eyes are actually already primed I just used the concealer and the setting powder and that is my eyes primed ready for eyeshadow so with that being said we can go ahead and get started with the first demo so first up we're gonna take the shade high hopes on my Colourpop tapered blending brush and this is going to be our transition shade and we're gonna start working that into our crease I like to first place most of the product in the outer corner 
and then I will bring it towards the inner part of my crease just using windshield wiping motions. So in the pan, I thought this would be a little bit lighter but it seems to be a little bit darker for like a transition shade but Colourpop eyeshadows are really easy to blend so we won't have a problem with this. So I'm focusing most of the product into the crease first. Once all that product is blended out, you can kind of tell when you have no more eyeshadow left on your brush. That's when I'll take it to the edges and blend those edges out. I'm just taking a clean blending brush. This is the Wet n Wild Crease Brush. I'm just going to diffuse the outer edges just to make sure everything is blended just because this shade was not what I was expecting. Next up, I'm gonna take the shade Hooky on my Morphe M433 brush. And this is going right in the outer third of our eyes. I'm gonna first just stamp the color on and then slowly blend it out with circular motions. This is like a nice, beautiful, burnt red terracotta shade. So just focusing most of that product in the outer corner. The more you pack on, the darker the color will appear. And then once you have like almost nothing on your brush, I'm gonna start sweeping that into the inner crease of my eye. And you can see it's not as dark as the outer corner because we didn't pack as much shadow there. So going back in with the first brush that we use without any further products, I just like to take it and just you know, blend any further. I feel like you can never do too much blending. Take the clean brush that I was using and blend everything together. Next up, we're gonna take the shade Rookie on my Sigma E55 brush. I'm gonna use the shade Dry first so I can show you what it looks like. But most likely, just knowing this kind of formula, I'm probably going to wet my brush. But I just wanna show you what it looks like when it's dry. So we're just gonna pack this on the inner third of my lid space. So I'm just really pressing the product on. I'm not really swiping. And you can see that this shadow it has like almost like a orangey red base and then it has little specks of purple glitters, blue glitters. It's a really beautiful shade. That is what it looks like when it's dry. I'm just going to wet my brush and when you wet it, you can see all those glitters just really pop out more and it just shows. And the reason why I'm using a brush like this rather than a brush like this, because a brush like this, it's really going to cut out your crease almost for you. It's very precise. And for this look, I don't really want that. That's why I'm using more of like a natural hair brush. It's more rounded, it's a little bit more bigger because when I go around the curve of my eye, it's not going to cut out my crease. It's almost just diffusing it and it's going to create that very soft look. There is a ton of fallout, so if you want to do your eyes first, then I'd recommend that. Now I'm just taking my NYX Matte Liquid Liner in the shade Black and I'm going to use this to line my lash line. The reason why I do this is because when I put false lashes on, I really need something to hide the band because I'm not like the best person to apply false lashes. So I at least need this even if I'm not even doing a wing. So I like to just look down into my mirror. And when you're looking down into your mirror and if you have like monolids or folds and you're playing with liquid liner, you don't want to look up because once you look up and the liquid liner hasn't dried down It's going to transfer onto your eyeshadow and you're just gonna mess up all your hard work So I'm actually gonna use the shade trophies on my makeup collective number no. five brush And while the liquid liner is still a little bit wet and I'm still looking down I'm gonna just smudge out that liquid liner on the outer corner a little bit because like I said I want everything to be diffused and smoky so I'm just zigzagging along it. Okay, now we're gonna take the shade High Hopes again. That was our transition shade. Using the Makeup Collective number 11 brush, I'm gonna run this on my bottom lash line, just really smoking this out. So what I like to do is just on the outer corner is connect the shadows. The top and the half don't look like two separate pieces. It looks like one whole makeup look. I really like to bring down my lower lash line color just because I have a lot of like wrinkles underneath here. And when you put like eyeshadow, kind of like covers everything up for you. Okay, next I'm gonna take the shade Hooky and Trophies. I'm actually gonna mix the two on my Makeup Collective number no. seven brush and I'm gonna use these two shades to define my bottom lash line. I was just gonna use Hooky on its own but I don't think it's dark enough to be defining 
anything on my lower lash line so I'm just gonna mix it a little bit with trophies so what I like to do is just stamp it right underneath and then I'll slowly just swipe left and right and that will start blending it out making it not look as harsh. I'm gonna be using my Odyssey in Modester Smooth Ride Supercharged Eyeliner in the shade Coffee. And I'm gonna use this for my bottom waterline. It's like a really dark chocolate brown, I think, just for this really warm look. It's really gonna tie everything together. And these eyeliners, honestly, are so amazing. They are so pigmented in the waterline. They stay in the waterline. They're super smooth. Just one of the best eyeliners I've ever used. Okay, so moving back on to the face, I'm going to be using my NYX Highlight and Contour Palette. I'm going to be using this shade in the corner here, which I believe is called Tan. And we're just going to use this to bronze up our skin a little bit. And I'm going to use this shade over here, which is called Sculpt. I'm going to use this for my nose contour. Using my Makeup Collective number 11 brush to help me with that. I'm just going down the sides of my nose. And I'll just take my beauty sponge to blend all that out. For blush, I'll be using this one from ColourPop. It is the shade 2D10. With my Real Techniques blush brush, I'm going to apply that to the apples of my cheeks. Just a little light layer, blending it back towards my bronzer. And for lashes today, I'll be using the House of Lashes Bedore Light. So those are the Bordeaux lights on. I'm just gonna let them keep drying and do its thing. But now we can move on to the other part of the collection, which is the Crush On You palette. I'm gonna take this shade here for this look. So I'm just gonna apply it to the tops of my cheekbones. Ooh, this is pretty. I'm just gonna take some on the bridge of my nose. I'm going to also use drop a pin as my inner corner highlight, just using a brush. When you use a brush for these super shock, they're not as like pigmented when you use your finger. Okay guys, this is the completed look for look number one. For the final lip pairing, I decided to go with Pencil Me In. I just felt like with the warm tones in the eyes and the warm lip color, it just really screamed out four vibes to me. I think all the colors really paired well with this one look, but I think Pencil Me In was like the best fall option. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this look. It was very simple, very easy to do. Nothing new, no crazy techniques. So I hope you guys enjoyed this this one Okay, so for demo two, I'm actually going to just do my eyes first and then do my base afterwards because we did experience some fallout and I just want to avoid that. So I'm going to do my eyes first. They are already primed with some concealer, sit down with some translucent powder, brows are on, and let's go ahead and get started. So the first shade I'm going to take is Trooper. And once again, I'm going to be using my ColourPop Tapered Blending Brush. And this is going to be our transition shade. So just like the first demo and how I always do my transition shade I always just put it in the outer corner of my eye first and then I'll bring it towards the inner part of my crease this shade is really nice but I feel like we've seen a similar shade like this from Colourpop before it's a really nice muted yellow with like an orangey base and now we're going to be taking the shade Sister on my Morphe M433. And we're going to start focusing this color on the outer corner of our eyes first. And wow, 
that is pigmented. So just stamping it on and then just slowly blend it out towards the inner part of our crease. Since we are creating a half cut crease, you do want some definition in that inner part of the crease so that way the half cut crease can contrast against these shadows i do see that it's like a little bit patchy over here like it's skipping over the eyeshadow i'm having a lot of trouble with this purple shadow the pigment is not staying it just blending away and it's like patchy like over here it doesn't want to stay on my lid so now we're going to be taking the shade reckless on my ColourPop e9 brush and i'm going to be doing exactly the same thing but i'm just going to focus it a little bit closer to my lash line and hopefully this will cover up the mistakes from the shade sister because that shade was horrible why are these so hard to blend out like it's literally so patchy oh man i don't have a good feeling Okay, so I just cleaned up underneath my eyes a little bit and the shadow is still looking very, very patchy. Even Reckless is so patchy, but it just doesn't want to stay. I don't know. I've never experienced this with ColourPop eyeshadows before. It's literally... <sighs> Okay, so now I'm just taking some concealer on the back of my hand and we're going to start cutting out crease and hopefully this will save everything. So I'm just going to first stamp the concealer in the inner part of my lid space and I'm just going to bring it past my natural crease first and slowly bring that towards the middle of my lid. And once we have that on, I'm just going to look up and that's going to mark a line of where I need to take it up. The brush that I was using is the Vanity Planet Small Cream Shadow Brush and now I'm just taking a very thin paintbrush with some concealer on it and I'm going to really carve out the crease now just along the natural curve of my lid. I like to look down into my mirror that way all the creases are flat and they're not scrunched up. So I'm really taking my time making sure the cut crease is really rounded like the shape of my eye. Going back in with my Vanity Planet brush, I'm gonna smooth out all the creases. I'm gonna go back in with Reckless, which was the third shade that we used, the patchy dark one. I'm taking some product on the back of my hand, just like rubbing off, because we don't want a lot. I'm just gonna go along that crease line. That's just gonna define the crease a little bit more. So while my concealer is still a little bit tacky, I'm taking the shade Alicious on my Makeup Collective number 18 brush, and I'm gonna take this shadow wet and apply that directly on top of that concealer. I feel like you don't even need to wet this shadow and it'll still look good. I'm gonna take my Makeup Collective number no. 4 brush, spray it again and taking that same malicious shadow, I'm gonna use this brush to go right up against the crease line. You gotta use brushes accordingly to your eye shape. I always had that image in my head that I had to use like big brushes because the people that I was watching on YouTube were using big brushes too but then I come to realize like my eyes are much smaller than this so why am I using such a big brush? You know what I mean? I'm gonna go back in with the shade Sister and I'm gonna use this to blend the metallic and the matte so that way there's no harsh line between the two. I'm just gonna stamp this on. So we're just gonna tap between the two where they meet swipe a little bit and that is gonna diffuse everything and make everything look blended. I come to my conclusion that shade sister no matter how you use it it's gonna look patchy and I don't even want to touch that shade ever again. Okay so now I'm gonna take my Inglot gel liner in the shade 77 which is just the black and I'm gonna use this to give myself a wing. Cut creases I feel like wings they just pair well really nicely together. I have a full tutorial on how I do my wings so if you guys are interested in seeing that I'll leave a card for it somewhere here. Okay, now I'm just gonna take the shade Reckless on my Sigma E20 brush and I'm only gonna use this shade on my lower lash line because I was gonna do Sister, like that was my initial thought, but after using the shade Sister, I literally hate that shadow. So I'm just gonna run one shadow under my lash line today. And then for my bottom waterline, I'm taking the ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Punch. And I'm going to use this to tight line my bottom waterline. This is really just going to bring out the yellow cut crease. I wish this was like a brighter yellow, but it's more like a muted Pikachu yellow. Okay, and to highlight my brow bone and inner corner, I'm using the shade Wild Out with my Vanity Planet Lip Liner Brush. Okay, now it's time for highlights. I want to pick up, drop a pen again, but I used it yesterday and I want to like 
show you guys a variety of the shades so i think i'm gonna do class x even though i think this is gonna be way too dark for my skin i just think it will suit the highlight that we used should i mix up? only you guys could be speaking to me like live telling me which one to pick just lightly pressing it on oh that's not too bad Okay guys, so this is going to complete the second demo. It was a rough one, but we pulled through and honestly, with everything together, lashes, liner, everything on together, I actually really like how this looked. I like the color combinations. It's a color combination I personally haven't done before. So with that, I do like this look, but it was really, really tough for me to get to this stage. But for the final lip color, I decided to go with Electric Feel. I feel like this was the best option. Since the eyes are so bright and loud I just wanted to keep the lips a little bit more neutral I also forgot to mention the lashes that I'm wearing these are the iconic lights from house of lashes and yeah that is pretty much it for the second demo Okay, so to get started with demo 3, we are just starting on our eyes first. I have my eyes primed, my brows on, but I don't have my base on. We are going to start off with the shade Trooper once again on my ColourPop Tapered Blending Brush. Just exactly the same as demo 2 as how I always do my transition shade. Now I'm going to be taking the shade Flow on my Sigma E25 brush and I'm going to start packing this all over my lid space, slowly blending that towards my transition. But I'm going to try my best not to overtake my transition shade. I do this a lot, like it's really hard for me to control not taking over the transition. So I'm just going to keep it really low, close to my lid first and slowly bring it towards the transition shade, not too high. So I do feel like Flow is a little bit patchy. I just switched to my Morphe M433 and I'm going to use this brush to blend out the edges. Okay, and now I'm going to take the shade Trophies on my ColourPop shader brush. And we're going to be doing exactly the same thing, but focusing this shade a little bit lower. We're going to start creating a little bit more of like a gradient. So we want the darker shade as close to the lash line. And using more of like a bigger, fluffier brush, it's going to help me diffuse the color. And the darker shade won't look as harsh. Usually when you play with darker shades, they are a lot harder to blend out. So you just want to take a little bit at a time. Okay, and now I'm taking the shade Hooked on my Sigma E55 brush. I'm going to use this shade Dry first. And I'm going to pat that all over my lid space on top of trophies. And I'm using my Sigma E55 once again. It's a really soft brush and it's very curved around the edges. I want this to be like a really pretty glittery smoky eye. And just using trophies as a base for the shade Hooked is going to give it more of like a darker sultry look. And now I'm just taking the shade EBB on my ring finger. I'm using this dried as well. I'm just going to lightly tap that on the center of my lid. And it's really going to just diffuse into the shade Hooked. It's really really pretty green shadow, like a really lime green, like a dirty lime green. 
Okay, now I'm taking my NYX Matte Liquid Liner in the shade Black. And I'm going to use this to line my upper lash line. And I'm also going to give myself a wing. I really like using this liquid liner to line my lash line because I can really create a very, very thin line. And now I'm just going to take the shade Flow once again on my Sigma E20 brush. And I'm only going to smudge this shadow on my lower lash line. Okay, now we can apply our highlight just taking the Crush On You palette. Since I've already used these two shades, maybe I should try something else maybe. Okay, I'm going to try this one. This one is called Talk and Code. I'm also going to take that shade and use it as my brow bone and inner corner highlight. And this is the last look completed. For the final lip pairing, I decided to choose a better off. And for my lashes, I am wearing the Bedore Lights from House of Lashes. But I hope you guys enjoyed this last look. It was a little bit of a struggle, but not too much compared to Demo 2. I like how the greens and the purples contrast against each other. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the last and final look. And this, guys, is going to complete my video for today. I feel like this video was a little bit too long, but be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you like me doing this 3 demo look with me talking to the camera, or would you just prefer it being a voiceover? I feel like voiceover is a lot more quicker, straight to the point, but me talking to the camera, I am talking, I am teaching, and the video is going to be a lot longer. But yeah, just let me know your thoughts on what you would like to see. Let me know your thoughts on the full collection. What do you guys think of this? But yeah, I mean, that is it. I think for today's video if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful be sure to give this video a thumbs up for me I seriously would appreciate it so much I want to thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video bye